All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our webinar. My name is Kate Cleric. I'm the programs manager with Reading is Fundamental. Um, thank you all for joining us this evening to learn a little bit more about the importance of family literacy. Uh, this is a presentation that will provide a really basic introduction to some simple ways to incorporate literacy into your home and your child's life. We're hoping to provide more of these webinars in the future, including ones that might go a little more in depth, but we're thrilled that you are all here with us tonight for this intro. I'm going to turn my light up just a little bit. Um, so the webinar, how this is going to go this evening is uh, first, we're going to provide you a little bit of background about why RIF exists and the current literacy landscape in America today. And then we're going to talk about some easy tips for reading aloud and also how to encourage independent readers. We'll talk about some free resources that we can provide to support your family. Then we'll have a brief Q&A. And finally, we're gonna close out with a read aloud of Giraffes Can't Dance. Um, and that's gonna demonstrate some tips from tonight's presentations, uh, from tonight's presentation. If your little one is nearby, we would love to have them join the read aloud for a bedtime story. Uh, but first, we are really excited to introduce you to Riff and some literacy tips for your home. So first, I want to ground you in RIF's mission. So founded in 1966, RIF is the nation's largest nonprofit organization for children's literacy, inspiring generations to read, learn, and grow. We envision a literate America, and we know that inspiring a passion for reading and providing support to the adults who care for and teach them is key to this work. Next slide. RIF exists because 25 million children in the U.S. cannot read at a proficient level. That's a staggering statistic to ground ourselves in and an important reason why RIF exists. It's also why we all care about this issue so deeply. Reading is Fundamentals committed to giving kids the confidence to strive because literacy opens doors to every aspect of life. Next slide. For more than 50 years, we have been working in communities across the country to drive local literacy impact. We have served and reached more than 50 million children, distributed over 400 million books, and partnered with thousands of program sites and volunteers in communities in every state and territory across the country. Our legacy and impact are far reaching, but we know that there is more work to be done. So next, we're gonna provide you with an overview of what our literacy landscape in America looks like today. Next slide. So the National Assessment for Educational Progress, or NAEP, acts as the nation's report card and as a national representative assessment of US students' knowledge. RIF refers to this as an important measure. Based on the latest NAEP results, the majority of American children are not on a path to realize all the opportunities that literacy provides. Reading performance for both fourth and eighth grade students has dropped since 2017 and has remained stagnant over the last decade. Since the last results, 17 states showed a decrease in reading scores and just one showed an increase and 34 showed no significant change. This reinforces we have more work to do and we can't give up and we have to come together to address this issue. So what exactly does this mean for America today and our students? Well, 34% of kindergartners lack the basic skills to read. 65% um, of fourth grade students read below grade level and that contributes to 8,000 dropouts daily. Fourth grade is the age where children start to um, start reading to, uh, sorry, start reading to learn rather than learning to read, uh, which is why that's a really important uh, milestone for fourth grade. So all in all, we know that growing up in a literacy rich environment can mean academic success for kids. Next slide. So as you can see, we do in fact, unfortunately have a literacy crisis in America and literacy is the most fun fundamental and foundational skill we can provide to children for their success in school, work and life. We really believe that reading is everything. Reading is the cost of entry for knowledge, for discovery and for a life full of possibilities. Knowledge cannot be spread, innovation cannot flourish, inclusion and equality cannot be achieved, human potential cannot be met without this fundamental skill. Next slide. So with that understanding of RIF's mission and the very real impacts when children don't have access to literacy resources to support their literacy development, we wanna turn the focus over to how we can support you. Next slide. 
So first we're gonna talk a little bit about how to support a culture of literacy at home and how to make your space a literacy rich, engaging environment. Next slide. It's true that the parent or caregiver is the child's first teacher. A parent or caregiver's role in helping to shape a child's education at home is so important. There are simple but highly impactful things you can do to help guide your child. Next slide. Simply reading 20 minutes a day is demonstrated to impact your child's reading development. It not only helps in brain development, but promotes language development and strengthens family relationships. To get set up to read with your child daily, you can create some habits and spaces at home to promote reading together daily. If you're able to, create a cozy reading spot and find moments to work literacy into your already existing routine. Bedtime is a great time to read, and sometimes that can be a really successful routine. Um, we also know that sometimes bedtime can pose its own challenges. So it's really about finding those moments of downtime or quiet, whatever works best for you and your family, where you can either offer your child something to read or read together. Another easy action at home is to get caught reading. This is the best thing you could do is let your child see you reading at home and model that reading habit. Next slide. You can seize every opportunity to weave literacy into your daily life. So once you start looking for it, you realize literacy really is everywhere. While you're sitting at the breakfast table and looking at the cereal box, or if you're reading a recipe and cooking dinner together, it's a perfect time to tell stories, call out what you're seeing, and discuss the written words all around you. This is going beyond the traditional book and is a great way to engage young readers, explore their interests, and offer, you can explore their interests, offer comic books, poetry, and more. Uh, here we've listed magazines, graphic novels, cookbooks, could be newspapers, uh, pointing out, you could point out the signs as you're walking down the street or driving, uh, reading shampoo bottles even during bath time. Uh, we really believe that once you start looking for it, you can find literacy everywhere and incorporate those opportunities. Next slide. Next, we're gonna to turn to some specific strategies you can focus on at home and how RIF can support you. We're gonna take a look at independent reading for older readers, reading aloud for younger readers, and then also how to engage readers of all types. Next slide. First, let's talk about fostering and supporting independent reading and why it's important. Its benefits include an increased volume of reading. If they're able to read on their own, they're empowered to read anytime they want. It builds confidence. So anything that they used to do with their adult that they have now learned how to do on their own, of course, builds confidence. Uh, being able to read independently is where a love of reading really, really develops. And of course, it improves comprehension, vocabulary, and fluency. Next slide. RIF actually offers a complete set of resources through an online destination, which is our independent reading center. It's broken up into interest topics, animals, art, inventions, and nature, and suggests books under that topic, as well as activities to support those books to extend the experience beyond the book. All of the resources offered here are designed to encourage and support independent reading. This page can be found at rif.org slash independent dash reading dash center. Next slide. Another resource RIF offers is our digital library platform, Skybrary. Skybrary offers more than 900 interactive eBooks with readme narration and animations. It also offers virtual field trips that you can enjoy right from the comfort of your own home. You can download five books at a time into your backpack, and then you can access those books at any time on any device. Skybrary is a really good transition from reading aloud to independent reading, particularly because of those narrations that your child can easily turn on and off. Skybrary is also designed with child-friendly navigation. Uh, this is one of the only resources that we're going to talk about tonight that we actually do charge a fee for, um, but we do also offer a free one-month trial if you want to explore what the platform can offer for your family. Um, so if you want to learn more about that, you can get started at rift.org slash Skybrary. Next slide. So as you seek to encourage independent reading at home, some tips that we suggest are help children find books on topics that interest them. Uh, we have a large emphasis on choice and we believe that being able to choose promotes a love of reading. You can help make sure that the book is at the right level of difficulty. 
Uh, you want to make sure that they're choosing books and materials that are challenging enough for them, but not too challenging that's discouraging. It's a fine line to walk, and ultimately, if a child feels very strongly about taking on a challenging text, uh, we feel strongly about not discouraging that. You can explore a variety of types of texts. Again, what speaks to their interests. Comic books and graphic novels, for example, successfully engage some readers that otherwise struggle. And lastly, leading by example is one of the best ways you can encourage literacy. Next slide. Next, we're gonna take a look at another strategy you can focus on at home, which is reading aloud. Reading aloud is really important for children who are not yet independent readers, and the benefits start from birth. They include brain development, language development, family relationships, academic success, writing skills, listening skills, vocabulary, it builds confidence, and as well as develops their imagination. Next slide. RIF offers a robust set of resources to support you as you engage in read alouds at home with your child. We have a dedicated support page with a number of tips and guides. Here, we're showcasing our comprehensive read aloud guide that supports, um, that provides ideas and best practices for bringing a read aloud to life. Uh, if you don't know where to start with reading aloud, this is a really, really good place to start. And many of our guides are available in English and in Spanish. Next slide. Here, we're showcasing the page we offer with additional resources, including a series of videos with creative tips you can use. So some of these videos delve a little deeper into reading development, um, as well as some short videos that demonstrate some of those tips that are discussed in the Read Aloud Guide. Next slide. Some quick tips for you to consider for your Read Aloud practice at home. Um, we recommend letting your child choose the book based on their interest. Again, letting a child choose can really help develop that love of reading. We encourage you to introduce the book, point out the title as well as the author and illustrator, and point out anything else interesting on the cover. Share any background knowledge about the book topic. If you know the book you're reading is about a dog, take a second and talk about dogs before getting into the book. You can do a picture walk and observe the illustrations. Make sure to really take a moment to look at the cover and talk about what you see. Use showmanship to engage your child. You can assign different voices and volumes and personas to the characters to really bring the book to life. It's also an opportunity to be silly and laugh with your child. And lastly, you can engage in post read aloud discussions with your child. How do they feel now versus how they felt at the beginning of the book? Would they have done what the main character did? This is where those real world connections are really made and part of what we mean by extending the experience beyond the book. Next slide. Lastly, we wanna focus on how you can best create an engaged reader in your child. In addition to creating a culture of literacy at home, a reading habit with your family and encouraging independent reading, creating engagement is a great way to encourage interest. We want to showcase our showcase for you our supplemental book resource platform, Literacy Central. Literacy Central offers a free offers free support activities and resources for thousands of classic and popular children's titles. You can discover free activity sheets, coloring sheets, word puzzles, author interviews, and more. Basically, if you have a favorite book, you can go to rift.org slash literacy dash central, search for the book title, and you can find all of those supplemental activities to support it. Next slide. Literacy Central offers a number of other features and tools you can use with your child at home, ranging from our puzzle creator, literacy tracker, and an interactive act and interactive activity calendars. All of them are free, as well as the guides and resources we covered earlier, with the exception of a full Skyberry subscription, which does have a fee attached to it. It's also important for children to read books that reflect their lives, families, communities, and cultures. So Rift's Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion Collection celebrates diversity and individuality, individuality and helps children ha teach them how to embrace and accept what makes us different. Next slide. We also want to highlight for you a recent webinar that we hosted that offers a number of wonderful ideas for you for how you can bring reading to life at home. 
of course, this is particularly pertinent now with a lot of us still in some state of virtual learning, though there's some hope on the horizon, luckily. Um, but if you are ready for some more advanced tips than what we covered tonight in tonight's webinar, uh, this webinar that we're highlighting here is a really, really great choice for you. So next slide. So we hope that we've helped you understand uh, how important the role is that you can play and that you have a better understanding of the comprehensive resources that RIF offers to support you in this task. In just a few moments, we're gonna close out with a, a, with a demo read aloud of Drafts Can't Dance. So if your little one has been patiently waiting, now is a good time to start gathering them up to join you. But as everyone is settling in, we're going to take a few minutes for a Q&A. Um, I'm gonna introduce uh, Katie Nicholson, our Director of Programs, who has been running our slideshow behind the scenes, um, but she's gonna help us uh, field some questions. Um, and then once we're done that, we're gonna jump into that read a lot of Drafts Can't Dance. All right, thanks so much, Kate, for, for the introduction. Um, we are gonna take just a few minutes to answer some questions before, as Kate mentioned, moving into the modeled read aloud. Um, so please feel free to, to drop any questions you have uh, into the question box and we'll go ahead um, and get those. And any questions we can't get to today, since we do wanna save time for that um, read aloud and we, we know that your time is so precious, we will follow up uh, with an answer uh, in an email, um, and we'll also be sending out this uh, slide deck to everyone uh, on the webinar tonight. Um, so here we go, we'll, we'll d dive right in. Okay. Um, so we do have questions about uh, the, the slide deck and if it will be shared. Yes, uh, everyone that has registered will get it even if they weren't able to make it tonight. Um, so we will go ahead uh, and and share that um, and we do have a question um, reiterating what resources are free and what are not Kate do you want to cover that yeah one more time? absolutely so uh, Skyberry is the only resource that we talked about tonight that had that comes with a fee and um, and there is a free trial for that so um, I want to emphasize that so the big things that we went over were all of the resources on Literacy Central. So Literacy Central is the place where you can search for um, books and find supplemental resources to go along with them. Also, we have the uh, webinar that goes deeper into um, that goes deeper into read aloud concepts. So a lot of the things that we talked about tonight, um, it just sort of goes deeper into that. Um, we also talked about uh, the free read aloud guide that we have to offer. So that's just a PDF um, that you can find. And there are links to all of this in the, in the deck when that gets sent out. So um, there's the free read aloud guide that we have there. Um, and also in addition to all of those resources that we talked about tonight, I mean, we just talked about sort of our top level resources. Um, in addition to those read aloud resources, there are all kinds of uh, further resources, activities and things like that to, um, to encourage reading at home. So um, that's a large part of what we have to offer um, on, our, on our website and Literacy Central. Awesome. Uh, the next question is, um, is RIF geared to just to elementary students or are there resources for upper grades as well? It's a good question. Um, I would say that we do, I mean, we have resources for um, all ages. We do emphasize, uh, have a lot of emphasis on elementary school age, uh, particularly because of um, that statistic that I mentioned earlier about how once you hit uh, third and fourth grade, you're um, reading to learn rather than learning to read. And so we spend a lot of time focusing on elementary school, but we do absolutely, um, we do have some resources that support uh, K through 12. Um, um, next question is that someone asked if we had templates um, for younger elementary students um, doing like book reports or providing information um, on books that they may have read in school or, or at home. And I will say that um, we have several resources on both. We have two kind of branches of our website, Literacy Network and Literacy Central. There are resources and templates on there about do a write-up of your your favorite book and and 
and the components of that book and, and things like that, which are, are very similar to, to a, a traditional book report. And so those resources are freely available to you. Um, and we can share that in the, the follow-up email. We can share the links to those. Um, and I also wanna share something we didn't talk about um, in the, the webinar, but that's happening right now. Uh, March is National Reading Month. And so we have a ton of resources to help um, encourage literacy at home. And even um, you can sign up for a daily text with a literacy tip um, that will come out through the rest of March. And I can include the link for you all um, of where to look at um, to find out all of our National Reading Month tips and tools. Um, and I'll put that in the chat, that link in the chat for all of you. It's a really uh, good point, Katie. I know I've enjoyed getting my literacy tip texting me too every day. So it's a really good resource that we've started doing this month. Yeah, it's, it's definitely great, um, a nice addition and a nice reminder every day uh, to focus on one thing uh, of literacy. Uh, someone else has asked, will you be offering webinars on a regular basis? It is something we're trying to do uh, more of. We don't have them on sort of a regular schedule at this point in time, um, but this is something we are trying to do more frequently. So uh, you can stay tuned for, for more announcements on, on future webinars. Um, next question is, how um, can you make sure that uh, books are appropriate, grade level, age? Um, I will say the resource that Kate mentioned, Literacy Central, it has a huge repository of book titles um, and content related to the book. So it does talk about the grade levels that that book is most um, appropriate for. Uh, we do have an app extension of that where you can literally, if you're in the bookstore or the library or um, you have a book title at home, you can scan the barcode on the back and it will pull up all the information on it. All of that is accessible on our website, which we'll be sharing all the links out afterwards. But we do have some information about the, the books that can help guide the, the age and grade level question. Um, Another question, I know we're running out of time um, and there's so many, um, this is great. Um, do we have resources in Spanish? We have some resources in Spanish. So if you go um, to our guides, um, some of those guides are offered in Spanish. I, I will say that we are currently working to make sure that more of our resources are in Spanish. Um, so we have some resources in Spanish right now, and we are working towards getting all of them in Spanish as well, so. Wonderful. Okay, I think that is probably all we have time for. I, I do see a few more questions popping up. Will this webinar be archived aside from just the slide deck and, and sharing that out? Um, we will um, share out a link to the recording, and we will typically archive all of our webinars on our Literacy Network website as well. So um, you'll definitely be able to access this afterwards. Um, and we definitely hope to have more of these in the future. Um, all right, so Kate, with that, uh, we can use the remaining of time that we have, um, just a few more minutes to do a modeled read aloud uh, that incorporates the tips and tools that Kate brought up earlier this evening. Yeah, so thanks, Katie. Um, yes, if your little one is nearby, now is the time to, for them to join. Um, okay, so if you're just joining, my name is Kate and I'm really excited to read to you. The book we're gonna read tonight is called Giraffes Can't Dance and it's by Giles Andre and illustrated by Guy Parker Reese. This book is being read with the permission of Scholastic and let's just take a look at the cover before we get into it. What do we see? Well, we see this big old thing. What is this? It's a giraffe, right? So we know it's got a big long neck and that pattern, but giraffes don't usually do that. And what's down here? That's what, a monkey watching him? And there's a tiny little cricket over here, right? And what time of day is it? Right, we know it's nighttime because of the stars and the moon. Hmm, what do we think this is gonna be about? 
Giraffes can't dance, but he's doing something silly on the cover. Well, let's find out. So again, title page, Giraffes Can't Dance, Giles Andre, and illustrated by Guy Parker Reese. Gerald was a tall giraffe whose neck was long and slim, but his knees were awfully crooked and his legs were rather thin. He was very good at standing still and munching shoots off trees. But when he tried to run around, he buckled at the knees. Poor Gerald. Now, every year in Africa, they hold the jungle dance, where every single animal turns up to skip and prance. But this year, when the day arrived, poor Gerald felt so sad, because when it came to dancing, he really was very bad. Poor Gerald. The warthog started waltzing, the rhinos rocked and rolled. The lions danced a tango that was elegant and bold. The chimps did a cha-cha with a very Latin feel and eight baboons then teamed up for a splendid Scottish reel. Gerald swallowed bravely as he walked toward the floor but the lions saw him coming and they soon began to roar. Hey, look at clumsy Gerald, the animals all sneered. Giraffes can't dance, you silly fool. Oh, Gerald, you are so weird. We know that's not very nice, right? How do you think Gerald feels right now? Gerald simply froze up. He was rooted to the spot. They're right, he thought. I'm useless. Oh, I feel like such a clot. So he crept off from the dance floor and he started walking home. He'd never felt so sad before. So sad and so alone. I think we've all felt like that before, right? Then he found a little clearing and he looked up at the sky. The moon can be so beautiful, he whispered with a sigh. Excuse me, coughed a little cricket, who'd seen Gerald earlier on. But sometimes when you're different, you just need a different song. Here's a little cricket. I think we saw that cricket on the cover. Listen to the swaying grass and listen to the trees. To me, the sweetest music is those branches in the breeze. So imagine that the lovely moon is playing just for you. Everything makes music if you really want it to. Sounds like this cricket has good advice. With that, the cricket smiled and picked up his violin. Then Gerald felt his body do the most amazing thing. His hooves started shuffling, making circles on the ground. His neck was gently swaying. His tail was swishing round. And there's Gerald having a good time, moving his hooves and swishing his tail. He threw his arms out sideways and he swung them everywhere. Then he did a backward somersault and leapt into the air. Now, where did we see this image before? This looks very familiar, right? This is the cover. Gerald felt so wonderful, his mouth was open wide. I'm dancing, yes, I'm dancing, I am dancing, Gerald cried. And look how happy Gerald is. Then one by one, each animal who'd been there at the dance arrived while Gerald boogied on and watched him quite entranced. They shouted, it's a miracle. We must be in a dream. Gerald's the best dancer that we've ever, ever seen. How did 
you learn to dance like that? Please, Gerald, show us how. But Gerald simply twirled around and finished with a bow. So everybody's throwing flowers at him and, and clapping and being excited. Then he raised his head and looked up at the moon and stars above. We all can dance, he said, when we find music we love. That's the end. I hope you all have a good post book discussion about this book tonight. And thank you all for joining us for this presentation. I really appreciate it. And we hope you learned a lot. Thanks so much. Good night.